when right when right wing people like um, you know in America refer to the Frankfurt School as cultural Marxism, it's a very big uh, cope because you know they were co-opted by the biggest capitalist powers in the West. They they were working for the CIA uh, and they are working for and you know we can we can honestly call it cultural capitalism because all these uh, various uh, things that they implement in postmodernism encourages consumerism encourages selfishness encourages and it, and it ties people's uniqueness to what they consume to the products they consume uh, or, or you know or you know or, or to various things that are like you know you have to buy Rather than your spiritual identity, you know, your the state of your soul, which is accumulated through your deeds, which are not bought, which are done through your uh, blood and sweat and tears and sacrifices, and you know, uh, withstanding all the pressure to be corrupt in this world, that is where the human being's true identity identity lies. <laughs> Es el pueblo entero el que ya está gritando, ¡Viva la revolución! Iranian nuclear weapons development. They have turned the island into a communist hellhole. The experiment in Venezuela has failed completely. And even like the war, the war, war with the West, it's not, it's like, you know, we don't believe in targeting innocent people. In fact, we see the Western people as victims of the system, um, you know, and, and not just when it comes to the material policies of oppression, like the usury or uh, all these other different issues with it comes to the way police crack down on people or whether it comes to. Um, all these different things. It's, just, it's the very like vapid and empty nature of Western culture as well that has like completely, completely just about consumerism and materialism, uh, no room for anything deeper about the human life. Like this is robbing people of happiness. You know, the most antidepressant addicted people are the people of the West. You know, um, the, with the highest amount of social problems is the people of the West. And, you know, that they want to sell us on this, social model that is causing the most unhappiness that is causing the most broken homes that is causing all these problems you know if we're at war at the west we're trying to save the people of the west and this is not a military war you know uh, if a muslim person who lives in the west is doing their duty they would actually try to help people uh through showing their moral character through explaining people why the philosophy of like post-modernity you know, and liberalism is bad for people's souls. So, you know, if, if, you know, if we're, you know, our war against uh, the West, you know, is not something like, you know, oh, you know, and, and again, they use the propaganda of so-called terrorism, which they created. They created Al-Qaeda. They created Daesh. They created ISIS. Um, and 9-11, you know, was a false flag. And they have all these false flags. So the idea that uh, we want to attack innocent civilians is nonsense. You know, the, only, the only place that uh, the West is getting um, treated with the uh, force of arms is in West Asia, where they're militarily occupying, uh, you know, uh, Af or not Afghanistan anymore, but now Iraq and Syria and, you know, fewer and fewer places, thankfully, as they continue to be humiliated. But, but when it comes to the actual West, there is no violent threat against the people of the West. There's only a threat against their uh, mentality, which is even destroying themselves. You know, the, the, the connection to the temporal realm has left so many empty hearts in, in the West. And they fill it with even more temporal stuff like drugs and alcohol and everything like that. Yep. And that creates all kinds of social problems. Uh, you know, they're, they're human beings just like everybody else. And a mother who loses her son to an to a overdose uh, from drugs imported by the CIA into the, into the streets of the U.S. Uh, is certainly going to feel as much pain as anyone else around the world. And if, if, they, if they were to have a more meaningful life, people wouldn't seek to destroy the their lives through these uh, temporary uh, addictions. So maybe we have the answer for the West and uh, terrorists like uh, Morty Klein 
is seeking to keep the people of the West oppressed so they're dumb and docile like zombies and they go and keep donating to the Zionist regime. Dude, that's such a great point. And I think that uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned everything you did because I think part of the system of Anglo-Zionism and imperialism, they want us to be drugged up. They want us to be uh, consuming uh, indecent material to OnlyFans and porn. Uh, they want us to be distracted. They want us to be isolated from family. Like, especially you look at the Zionist influence of postmodernism on the left. Like they, the Frankfurt School, a lot of, a lot of um, these Zionist types funded this postmodern idea that the family unit is bad, uh, that structure is bad, the, you know, that anything organized is bad. Um, and, and you look at also even like the painkillers, you look at the Sackler family, that's one of the, the, the creators oh, yeah. of Oxycontin. The opioid crisis. You know, yeah. And, and you see the opioid crisis and, you know, the Sackler family donates a, a crap ton of money to universities in Israel for biomedical research. So you have a lot of Israeli uh, companies that are creating these drugs that are getting people hooked up, just like the Rothschilds did in the 1800s, right, with their opium. Just like a lot of the, oh, yeah. the bootleggers did, the, the bottle alcohol distribution, you know, and, and the one thing that, that I learned about uh, Islam that I found to be really beautiful, it actually helped me uh, to stop drinking alcohol. So this, check this, right? This year, actually this week marks uh, four years of being completely sober alcohol. Um, so I haven't had a, a sip of alcohol in four years. Um, Congratulations, uh, my brother. That's a huge... Uh one year out of the darkness. Um, um, it's, it's such, it's like, you know, I mean, it's so illogical. It's like, imagine if like punching yourself in the face was like a cool thing to do and everybody would go to parties and like punch themselves in the face. And if you didn't punch <laughs> right, yourself right. in the face, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, like, oh, why is that guy not punching himself in the face? Like what's going on? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, and, and it's like all the, all the largest corporations, like, you know, you know, alcohol is like a huge uh, culture and it makes, it keeps people stupid. It keeps people dumbed down. It's, it's, a, it's just one of the many bread and circuses that exist. Um, and, and it's ironic that, you, you know, like, while like the Islamic revolution is neither capitalist nor Marxist, um, you know, we, we align with, obviously we believe that capitalism is the greater evil. Um, so we align with many uh, socialist governments of the world because we, we can't force Islam on other people. And so the Islamic uh, government is for us who chose it. But, you know, other people who they believe that this is like their mode of uh, overcoming the arrogant powers, you know, um, our, goal, our goal is to support them in, uh, regardless of the minor disagreements. And even like, you know, among uh, different countries, there's different like interpretations of it. So the while maybe at the, the early uh, Bolshevik revolution was hostile to Christianity and Islam, especially from the Trotskyite wing, which was later purged mm -hmm. uh, by uh, Stalin, who uh, sort of implemented very many pro-family policies, uh, which many of these CIA Western leftists absolutely hate, and they view it as like authoritarianism that should be like rebelled against. Um, you know, you have like, you know, especially in Latin America and other parts of the world, like family is very, you know, something that's important to the society. And even like the slogan of Nicaragua is like, um, like uh, Christian or like socialism and Christianity uh, may not be getting it 100% correctly, but they, they see that like, uh, you know, the real teachings of the religion is, is against the, uh, is against the oppressor and everything like that. So when right, when right wing people like, um, you know, in America refer to the Frankfurt school as cultural Marxism, it's a very big uh, cope because, you know, they were co-opted by the biggest capitalist powers in the West. They, they were working for the CIA uh, and they are working for, and, you know, we can, we can honestly call it cultural capitalism because all these uh, various uh, things that they implement in postmodernism encourages consumerism, encourages selfishness, encourages, and, and it ties people's uniqueness to what they consume, to the products they consume, uh, or, or, you know, or, you know, or, or to various things that are like, you know, you have to buy rather than your spiritual, you know, your, the state of your soul, which is accumulated through your deeds, which are not bought, which are done through your uh, blood and sweat and tears and sacrifices. And, you know, uh, withstanding all the pressure to be corrupt in this world, that is where the human being's true identity 
identity lies. So, you know, the the American, you know, as you mentioned, the American Anglo-Zionist system uh, uh, is keen on like pulling people away from what is their true nature and what will actually like give them a real sense of uh, self. And they seek to export that uh, to the global south, um, particularly because they know that people like Ziad Nakhala, the, the Secretary General of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, or Qasem Soleimani, or Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah, or the Ansarullah resistance movement in Yemen, um, they come from a place where their character is shaped by the leadership of their father and the mercy and love of their mother. Uh, those are the, those are like the key ingredients, the yin and the yang. Um, you know, if, if they were to tear everything apart and just atomize everything into completely like individualistic society, like American liberalism uh, dictates, then they would have a, such an easy way to plow through the uh, areas of the world that they want to plow through, whether it be Palestine or Iraq or Syria or Iran, and everybody would be their plaything. And nobody would be disciplined enough to really um, organize themselves. And I learned this, you know, when I lived in the United States, uh, when I tried working with the Western left, not only this, forget about their ideology and that they believe that like Russia is equally as imperialistic to the U.S. or Iran is equally as imperialistic <laughs> to the U.S. Um, even to organ, even just when it comes to organizing, they're so selfish. They're so uh, interested in just following their lowly desires around all day, uh, you know, just you know, self gratification and everything like that. They're they're impossible to organize, uh, except for maybe a few, yeah, yeah selfies, selfies and everything like that. Um, you know, if they go to a protest, it's just like to show like how awesome they are, rather than to actually achieve anything. Uh, maybe only on a handful of issues like abortion or something, or, or whenever like uh, George Soros tells them to cry, you know, they'll, they'll go for, they'll go for that. They'll, you know, when it comes to important issues, they're pretty lackluster. Uh, 